Welcome, dear viewer, to this program called The Riser. Speaking to you is Pastor Oscar Cambona. And uh, we are going to share from the topic, cast your nets, cast your nets. So before we proceed, uh, shall we believe and pray? Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that this morning and a moment like this, you may speak unto us and your word may fail and feed us in a special way as we prepare for your second coming and as we live today as the light bearers and your children and father this is our prayer by faith in jesus name amen we're going to the book of luke luke chapter 5 and uh, the topic of my sharing is cast your nets the word cast your nets is spoken by Jesus to Peter. And when Jesus is speaking this, uh, you and me could be wondering, how on earth could a carpenter instruct a fisherman on how to do the fishing? Or did he even consider the time? The book of Luke chapter 5, if you'd allow me to read, so that we are told better from the Holy Scriptures. I'm um, reading from verse 1. The scripture says that, And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of uh, Gennesaret, and this is Jesus that we're talking about here, and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Fishermen washing their nets, verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he should thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draft. Launch into the deep, and uh, I will put an emphasis of how far our launching should be. He told Peter, launch into the deep. Don't just launch. Don't, don't, don't just walk around the shore. Don't, don't do it in any shallow place. Launch into the deep. Now, verse 5. And Simon answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and we have taken nothing. All the night, taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I think these are one of the most important words that I pick from this text. Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Peter says, nevertheless, at thy word, not at my knowing, not at my wisdom, not at my experience as a fisherman, because uh, Peter was very sure that he had tried what experience had taught him. He had done what strength he had, the muscles he had could do. But he tells Christ that we did that all night, but caught nothing, nevertheless. Now, this is the point uh, that I'm bringing before you this morning as a burden that I have. The burden of nevertheless at thy word. Not in the wisdom of men. Not in what experience. You know, one uh, thing that is uh, a limitation to many people is the experience they have. You see people walking around and they're asked, of their experience. How many years of experience do you have in this particular area? People say this and that. And, uh, and most of the requirements are pegged on the, the number of certain number of, number of years of experience. Now, I want to tell you the liability that is in experience. Experience can tell you that you can, you can face 
this monster. You can fight this battle and win. The, this battle ahead of you can be won just like you won the one behind you. Experience can always tell you that I may not need any other thing. It's the knowing I have. It's how I've always done it that is going to help me. So out of experience, Peter says, if it was about experience, then I'm, um, I, I would have faced you head on and I would have told you to look for a hammer and a nail and go to the carpentry. But now at thy word, as, as the master, as Christ, as, as Messiah, at thy word, then I'm going to let down. The, it does make sense for me, but because you have spoken, I may not be at a position of understanding the plans you have with what you're saying. I may not, I may not know or see in full what is lying ahead, but Jesus at thy word. If it was at my wisdom, I'm telling you, we could have disagreed right here. But at your word, Peter says at your word, I'm going to let down the net. And let's read verse 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Verse 7, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other sheep, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the sheep, so that they began to sink. Verse 8. This is another move. In verse 8 is another move that is very humbling. Listen to what Peter says here. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, his, uh, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a, I am a sinful man, O Lord. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. This is very different from what would have happened to me or would have happened if it was you who would have come out with such a great draft, such a big catch. Actually, if it was me preaching here, standing here in front of you, I would have said, yeah, it's my big sheep and good net. This catch is not from uh, any, no, there's no, Jesus did not go fishing. It's because my night is always good. It's because we pulled out well. We were careful to block the ship from flowing back to the water. If, if this was an ordinary me and you whose eyes are not on Jesus Christ, most of us do not acknowledge Christ at the center of our success. When something good happens, they are more into, it's me who did it, you know. It, and even when they do something good, in their service or in our service to the Lord. They always tell God, God, you know, if it was not my hard work, all the glory you have could have not been yours. So if there's some credit that comes with that, you divide for me, because if it were not for my hard work, God, you wouldn't have been there. But this man, Simon Peter, feels so humbled. Actually, instead of rising and thumping his chest and telling other fishermen, no, you need to know and have good sheep like I have. You need to buy the net from the sheep, from the shop I, I, I bought mine. He goes down and tells Christ, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. At his point of success, he is humbled. And this is contrary to what happens to us today. If God will give me a, a big catch today, now we learn, always want people to know. No? Walking around, and uh, people should always know know that this is what we are, and this is not what we ought to be. Peter acknowledges that it's only at the word of the Lord Jesus Christ that he managed this success. This success did not come from, from himself. It didn't come, it was not his good net, it was not his big ship, it was not his good muscles at, at pulling. I hope you you ever had an experience of fishing, you know, they go and they pull. They Peter says, I, I'm not part of this access. If Christ Jesus was not here, I know what I caught. I caught nothing. But all this, I'm not part, I'm not part, any part, there's no credit on my side over this. 
Jesus depart from me. And that's what is actually bringing power in the life of Christians. When we go down, and God is always willing to lift us up when we humble down, when we go down. And probably I'm looking at Christ Jesus watching over them, toiling the whole night. And until a point that their strength and their good experience gave them a catch called nothing. That's when Christ showed up. And many times I want to say that Christ is looking and watching at you. you. You're trying it so hard. You're working hard, but on your own. You, you don't acknowledge God. You don't submit. You plunge to the Lord. You don't pray for them. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 of verse 2, the scripture says that commit all your plans unto the Lord and your thought shall be established. And sometimes God is looking at me and you. We're toiling and we're toiling, but we are not inviting Jesus in it. The, at the end of it all, we cut nothing. And uh, good enough, Christ comes after and nothing has been caught. And sometimes much of this that we do on our own without involving God, after they give us nothing, now God comes and lifts up, gives us something just to remind us that our hard work without him only catches but nothing. Friend, Jesus tells his, uh, uh, his servant Peter, tells Peter, cast in the deep. I'm, 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 I'm interested in the far Peter was told to go. Peter was not told to, to go just any shallow, or just anywhere, or to do it lazily. God is willing to lift up those who take him at his word. When he says, cast in the deep, friends, let it be in the deep. Some of us are doing it just at the shore and they, they're expecting a big catch. There's no commitment, there's no consecration. Even in our spiritual lives, if we cast at the shore, the catch is not big. If, if, if we don't do it, no, with, with the zeal and the zest, if, if we don't give ourselves to it with consecration, Peter is told, cast in the deep. And that's what he did. And we can see that he got a catch. No, the, the draft was so big. It made the net burst. It fed other people. When we cast in the deep, other people are fed as well. When we cast up in the deep, the Lord will surely bless the works of our hands. I want to speak to someone today. And if someone may not be you, then Lord, speak to me. Our casting should not be done on, on that some shallow end. It should, it should not be done with, with zero commitment. Friends, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your strength. Knowing that, this girl says, knowing that there's no work, there's no labor in, in that other side we're going. From this side of life, we're going to some other side. That is before Jesus Christ comes back the second time. So we told, do it with all your might. Cast in the deep. My prayer is that as we go out there, as we ask of the Lord to bless us, as, as, as we wait on him, let us cast in the deep. Whatever you do, make sure. If God has given you, like he gave David a sling, if it is a sling in your hand. My friend, cast in the deep. Go soil it and pick up the best stone. Because God is watching. If you cast in the deep, if, if, if you're really in the deep, he is planning to let the water push all the fish in your net. God is planning that he's, it's going to be done against the odds, the standing odds. I know this great draft is coming at a time that every other fisherman, uh, fisherman could have cancelled no, the attempt. Every other fisherman could have said, no, it's not the right time to do the fishing. They, in their own experience, they know that the draft is only good when we do it at this particular time. The time that human experience and human wisdom and human knowledge uh, know what history had, had taught them, what experience had taught them. This time that Christ is asking them to cast the deep is a time that is contrary to what experience is singing, to what human knowledge, human understanding. God can change our situations at times that look so odd. 
not only to other people, but even for us. We could have been toiling and toiling and toiling, and sometimes God waits until all your strength catches nothing. That's when he comes to tell you that the catch belongs to him, not to your nest. The catch belongs to him, not your experience. It's, it's him, and without him in your life, you catch nothing. Luke chapter 5, verse 5, and has to get back to this text. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. All the night. And have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word. Brothers and sisters, I want us to believe in this portion of nevertheless. At the word of Christ Jesus, something can happen that in our own muscles we can't reach. God can decide to lift you up after you surrender, after acknowledging that your own strength can do nothing. That's when he takes you to heights that your own efforts could have not lifted you up to. After you have acknowledged that in, on my own, I can but catch nothing. That's when he comes and gives you, he gives you a catch, gives you a draft that is bigger than your net. And when he does that, when he meets men and women who have acknowledged that on their own they can do nothing, God uses such people as agencies of feeding other men. The men who also caught nothing in the, in the lake were bid come. When God says that such a spirit in you, a spirit of, on my own, I can do nothing. The spirit of humility. Power, when Christ spoke to his disciples, he told them, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. We don't receive power when our muscles are big and we are stronger than others are, when we are ahead of other people. We don't receive, we don't have power when we have positions. Positions do not bring power. What brings power is the Holy Spirit. It's obedience to the word of God. That's what brings power. We could have positions, many people have positions, very few have power. When the Holy Spirit is upon me, when the Holy Spirit is upon you, that's where the power comes, comes from. And it's about time that God uses such humble instrumentalities to be a blessing to other people. I want to tell you that it's another thing that if both, you know, if the fishermen were in the lake, that could have uh, arisen a time not once, more than twice, a time of quarrel. You know, when they're fighting for territory, when these people are casting their nets here and the other people want to talk of, no, we, our nets are already down in that area. You know. Definitely there could have been, uh, there could be times when the fishermen are at loggerheads. I may not have personal experience over this, but I always, always see this when people are in workplaces sometimes. They don't greet each other every morning. Yeah, they could, it could be well with them for a while, but later on something arises. So it does mean that every other person who was at the lake at that time were friends to Peter. But I want to say, when such an instrumentality that God chooses to bless, when, when such an instrumentality will be the material I am, where I live. If that will be the material you are, where you work, where you live, in your family, uh, to the people around you, God will use such humble instrumentalities to be his hands feeding the mouths of those who have lacked. And that's what the scripture says. If you say your enemy hungers, feed him. Feed him. Why, why would God speak to people? especially on that line. Why would God insist on you feeding your enemies? God, Papa says, that when you keep all aside, when you're obedient to him, when, when you surrender to him, then you cannot love him and hate your brother. And God, Papa says that whoever this person may be, sometimes we call them enemies, not not knowing that it is us who have not made it right with the Lord. When we make it right with the Lord, then we share the bread, we share the drink. And sometimes I've always learned that when, when you are loggerheads with your enemies, when you don't feed your enemies, you make your bread small. If you're not willing to share, if, if you're not willing to give them a drink, that God is not willing to give you more water to drink. Actually, when, when we 
keep off our enemies. These people who are of, of time or another have not been so good to us. When we keep them off, we make our bread small. Because if God would have chosen to treat us the way we sometimes we treat other people, we couldn't be living. We couldn't be having. We could not be having this hope we have, the hope of eternity, the hope of you no know, being saved, being redeemed. He could have never left uh, you no know, his son Christ Jesus to come and die for me and for you, brothers and sisters. There comes in our lives the power when we listen to God when when. When we give ourselves to him, I think one of the things we should not overlook is the, is the fact that when Christ Jesus was preaching, he was not standing in the sheep of a stranger. He was standing in the sheep of this man, Simon Peter. Now when you give yourself to an instrumentality that God will use, there are blessings that comes with that. He tells Peter, now, thrust into the ship and cast in the deep. After, after he makes use of his ship, this is what if we give ourselves to the Lord, no, our labor in the Lord is, is not in vain. If we give ourselves to the Lord, I love the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. One that encourages me and you to know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. There is a sure reward. When we give ourselves to the Lord, whatever we do for him, he has good plans for us. He, he blesses them that offer themselves to him. And God is saying, cast your nets. Cast your nets. Regardless of what time it is. It may, not, it may not agree with the time that has always worked best for us. It could be another time. It could be a time that he did it to Sarah. At a time that Sarah had gone beyond the bio biological, uh, you know, good point, the, 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 the biological limit of, of, of conceiving, God blessed Sarah with the child, made her the mother of nations. At time the womb had walked far from, you know, the days of fertility, God blessed. It can happen. His time may not be intimidated by a people's expectation, by he's just asking you to cast. And if we will be obedient to him today, if we cast down our nets at his word, there will be a catch like it was with Peter. God is faithful. He promises he's going to let. We don't understand, neither have we to understand the process. I said, our portion is the promise. The process is in his hands. How the fish is going to get on my net in the, during daytime after we toiled the whole night? I couldn't use the time for, for the fish to be caught. How this is going to happen, that is beyond my knowing. What I grab by faith is his promise. The promise is ours, the process is his. We don't understand, we don't have to understand. But Peter says, but at your word, I will. Brothers and sisters, today at his word, at the word of God, God promises that he has good plans for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us future and hope. You could have toiled years the whole night and caught nothing, but at his word, we can hope again. We can listen to him again. We can trust on him again. There is hope to whoever believes and trusts in the Lord. There is, there is, he will never let them go in shame. They will never be embarrassed. They, they will never be ashamed. Them that trust upon the Lord. The psalmist says, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Never have I seen the little ones begging for bread. Lions slack in the jungle. They have strength. They can run. They can chase antelopes. But I've seen them lack. But them that trust upon the Lord, them that take the Lord at his word, never lack. Brothers and sisters, this is the portion and uh, the message that the Lord had for us today. We can, at his word, cast our nets again. Shall we believe and pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we've heard that at your word, things happen that could have never happened on our own strength. At your word, we can go places we could have not, have, we could have not walked on our own. At your word, things happen, Lord, 
that are just but miraculous. Men and the world don't understand. I want you to believe in this world. We want to have the faith and the conviction that you servant Simon Peter had, that we may also cast. Much as our strength is depleted, much as we have been trying this at times that was good for us, much as no, the other professionals have even given up on our situation, but Lord, at your word, we know this possibility of restoration, this possibility of making things new. Lord, we want to believe you up, that it may be well with us. May our faith be firm. And Lord, do unto us as you did unto your servant, Simon Peter. Bless us all, Lord. This is our prayer by faith. In Jesus' name, amen.